We're taking, we're taking, we're taking your calls uh, on this now. Let's get back to our stories of the day and we welcome Pete Price. Morning, Pete. Oh, morning. <laughs> How do we find you today? I'm in fine vessel. The weather's nice up here. I have a request. I need a Jeremy Vine mug. I've only got one with P on it. So I need one for home, please. So can I have one, a mug sent to me? We're going to send that straight up to you now. Uh, express delivery. Yes, absolutely. And it won't be broken on the way. Listen, you've got a story. I, I, I tell you what, I haven't met anybody with any sympathy for this footballer, Kurt Zuma, over the cat thing. It's driven people nuts, Pete. It has indeed. And what it makes me angry, and my listeners agree, and I, have like you, I've not spoken with one, one person who is not angry. He must be prosecuted. He must be prosecuted because it's, it's got to send out the right signal. If he isn't, £250,000 fine is nothing. Nothing to him. It's a drop in the ocean. And I've said over 40 years of having a late night radio show, and my mother had a husband who was a wife beater. I do believe that damaging and punishing a, an animal will lead to other things. I've always said, if you can be cruel to an animal, you can be cruel to a human being. It has got to be shut down and there's got to be a signal. There's no argument over it. No argument at all. What he did is unforgivable. It made me shake with anger. I watched it once and I couldn't sleep last night. When he ready to come on this show, I was so angry. Well, He's got, got to be prosecuted. Point, point taken. I mean, the RSPCA and the police seemed in, on day one to be thinking, well, maybe it's not for us. They've now acted. So you've got Essex police going in. The RSPCA have taken the cats, Martin. Is that right? Um, I think in the circumstances, yes, you know, while the investigation is going on, it was completely numbskulled for West Ham to have selected him um, to be a player on the same day this, this story broke. I mean, how tone deaf can you get? Sponsors are dropping him and the club are like a hot brick, which they should. And uh, you know what Pete was saying there, one thing that really, really concerned me about this video was watching his son, his son then start hitting the cat. Oh. So you're dead right, Pete. You know, people learn how to be cruel. And, and, and we've, really, we've seen serial killers who started on animals, the most obvious being Ian Huntley was... was Jeffrey was, Dahmer as well. Jeffrey Dahmer as well, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, well, anyway, let's see. But there is potentially a jail sentence here, Susie. Maybe that's too much. Uh, well, yes, I don't think he's... It depends on the amount of injury, of course, that's been done to the cat. I'm sure when they, they've seized them, they're going to be giving them veterinary examinations to see if there's any sort of long-term abuse that may be that they can spot. But uh, it was quite clear from watching that video, it probably wasn't the first time that it had happened. Yeah. It was something he was reenacting. There were exactly. children involved. Yeah. And like Pete and, and Martin said, if you can uh, be a big, strong, powerful man attacking a fairly fragile, smaller, weaker creature, then you're going to be doing that in other mm. ways. And there are going to be kids going home in half term from school, kicking the cat and reenacting it because they're West Ham fans. Yeah. So he should be prosecuted. What more evidence do they need? They've got the video. It's the easiest prosecution well, it, in the world. I reckon, because he's lost sponsors now. He's lost one called Vitality and Adidas. I reckon that short video has cost him a million quid already. Two weeks' wages as well. Which is more than he'd ever be fined in a magistrate. Right? That's true. But I'm just thinking, Pete, what's also interesting is what's happening in Paris. I don't know if you've seen, this will give you some heart, because if we think we like animals, the French, uh, are on a, the French animal rights law are on a similar level, and they've now started petitioning to have him brought back over there and prosecuted for it. Well, I, 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 I think that's brilliant. By the way, he said sorry several times. He's only said sorry because he was caught. How many yeah. other times has it happened? That's what upset me. I'm good on the French. I don't often agree with the French, but I'll have this. <laughs> Susie in the mirror. You've got Danny Dyer, who's still doing this, this phone bill thing with his daughter. Yeah, uh, it turns out they've been uh, having a chat on their podcast, and she said, uh, you're still paying my phone. And he goes, you what, eh? I didn't realise, and they've got like a family contract, and he's been paying it for apparently 13 years and didn't realise, which is just an indication that someone's got too much money because they're not checking where it's going every month. I mean, how oh, many parents would lovely, though, know? Isn't it? Though, is it? Oh, yes, yeah. so you've got to know, but is it, is it a nice thing to do, Martin, or not? Oh, I think it is nice. It probably started out where he wants to keep an eye on her phone bill when she was a bit younger, and now I think it's the curse of the forgotten direct debit. But don't we all do that? Well, well, if you've got enough money to forget your direct debit, yeah, some of the subscription. <laughs> Subscriptions are an absolute curse, aren't they? Everything now, even apps. I, I'm, I, I'm really strict about it now. I was paying my uh, TV licence for about three properties for a while yeah. there. It was just outrageous. 
So I had to go back and, and check my direct debits and make sure that I wasn't doing that. So now I regularly check my direct debits and yeah. see if there's anything just yeah. snuck in there on the fly. Anything you're paying, Pete, which you don't you didn't realise? Uh, a few things, but what I'm a different age to any of you. I remember being on my phone at home with my mother shaking the little box yeah. to put the money in <laughs> now. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to mention just a bum the phone story because I've just noticed it. One of the people I most admire in the world, Katie Piper, oh, yeah. has got an OBE. So well done, Katie. I think she's absolutely an amazing person. OK, Martin, in the sun, you've got the, the hospital pass here of explaining what this new form of energy is. Yeah, I absolutely love stories. Like this. A, I'm a complete geek. B, I think Britain really needs to be energy self-sufficient, all this Ukraine business and fossil fuel debate. So there's this amazing reactor which has been developed in Oxford, so great British science, since the 1980s. Uh, and it was tested yesterday and it produced enough energy in five seconds to power 60 kettles. And what it does, it fuses seawater. It superheats seawater um, and two different hydrogen molecules fuse. It generates a huge amount of heat energy. Uh, it's, it you've, been, you've, exp you've actually done it for me here. Look, yeah. someone's done a very brilliant graph. It take us through, so, so the first thing on the left is Let's see, we've got heat energy, that's exactly yeah. right. So you've got your source put on the pan, on the on the hob. Yeah. And then there's isotopes of hydrogen. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's a bit like a nuclear bomb, there's some sort of fusion moment. But it's actually the same process as how the, our sun generates its heat. So it's basically the sun fusion rather than nuclear fusion, which splits the atom. Look at this. No, no, nuclear fission splits the atom. Yeah. Fusion, oh, yes. smash it together. For, okay, so fish, so if you get them wrong, you blow. Well, you, we, we, we've had A-bombs and we've had H-bombs, so we've had, we've had fission weapons and we've got fusion weapons now. You can make weapons out of this. Right. What's but, this kind of technology? But what they're saying is that one bath of salt water can produce enough power for one person for an entire lifetime through this. And the amount of energy is 10 million times less than fossil fuels to generate the same kilojoules. That's okay. amazing. Is it, so if you know the difference between fusion and fission, You've got a science background. No, I write about nuclear test spectrums and I have done for 20 years. So I know a lot about our nuclear weapons program. So it's not the same as this. Is this safe? That's what we need to know, Susie. Um, so long as there are people running it and it's, they're using seawater and it's all contained, then yes. If yeah, it goes horribly wrong, and it can potentially, then it's less safe. I'm but just going to worry. make the deuterium and the tritium, the, the, high, the isotopes of hydrogen first, because that's heavy water. And normally when you make those kind of heavy water isotopes, that does real, involve... It's a real a geek off, I'm loving it. 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 Honestly, you didn't say anything about your knowledge until the moment came out. Pete, do you want to tell us you're now a fully qualified nuclear physicist? Flabbergasted. <laughs> 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 the level of knowledge we have here. Brilliant. Well done. Hats off to Susie. Okay, Pete, in the mirror, I know you, you're friends with Colleen Rooney, and she, they've done this documentary, and it's, it's quite revealing, isn't it? I, th I thought one day they would uh, have to do this. Um, I've watched them grow up as kids, and in fact, I hosted uh, Colleen's uh, 21st birthday. Um, they're two really ordinary people, and he has a mega talent and they were thrown into the spotlight. They have had the press on their back every moment of every day of their life, and he's made mistakes, and she's had a terrible time with it and been very hurt, but she's got the most wonderful family unit, her friends that she's kept from school, that have protected her. She's not a stupid woman in any shape or form. She's fought for her marriage and for the kids who are beautiful. The kids are great, and she's... She, She's weathered the storm. And yes, he's made mistakes, as many, many people have. But because of who he is, it was so, so public. And I felt terribly sorry for both of them. She's an ama well, they're both amazing people who do so much for charity that never, ever gets into the papers. Nobody talks about that side of them. But she's now a strong, powerful woman. And I love them to death. But yes, he's made terrible mistakes. Sure. Uh, but he's also been goaded into making mistakes. And they're just two ordinary kids that grew up to who they are today. There's a great line from Colleen. Alcohol has a lot to do with Wayne's problems. It's not a good thing for him to be unsupervised. Mm. It's just giant, just generally. Here's a clip from the documentary. It's out tomorrow on Amazon Prime. I knew groups that Wayne was hanging around with together with alcohol. 
knuckles. From a press point of view, they were a front page and back page couple. The usual have his hopes and disappointments. I forgive him, but it wasn't acceptable. People still look at me in a different way. For me, it's important that people remember me for who I am rather than what I've done. Okay. What, oh, 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 come on, come, come, on, on, come on. Let's see that go. What, what, happened, what happened there? That's outrageous. Come on, that's the best bit. <laughs> the best bit of the whole show. <laughs> God. Okay, I'll mention in the mail, this is the headline, why extroverts love Taylor Swift but warriors like a burst of Bowie. Storm and I always talk about Bowie, trying to work out his relative. You know, merits, because the, whether the younger generation will actually be into Bowie and recognise him for the great artist that he is. Anyway, this shows where you are in the spectrum if you like certain artists. So if you don't like Dolly Parton, you're conscientious. If you like Ed Sheeran, Beyonce, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, you're extrovert, Storm. That's you. I'm neurotic because and this is my list of, list of you know stars: The Stones, The Sex Pistols, David Bowie. I'm neurotic. And then Isn't the, the, that also your age, though? I don't know. I mean, Sex Pistols, The Stones, David Bowie. That's an era as opposed to a character. Trait. My yeah. was when I read it as well because extrovert are sort of more modern. And if you grow up with the threat of being the nuclear bomb, you do get a bit neurotic. Yeah, it is generating. Love, love Where are you on this, Peter? Uh, well, I love Mariah Carey, so I must be just gay. <laughs> <laughs> the one down is no, you know, okay, let's, let's, let's let the cat out of the bag here. On the left hand side of this column that says agreeable, and agreeable is Elton, Paul McCartney, Marvin Gaye, Lionel Richie, Phil Collins, not taking anything away from them, but. We don't, we don't want to hang out with that necessarily with people who are fans. Phil Collins is incredible. He uh, was with Genesis, yes. Oh, then no, he, he was when he was with why Genesis. Is, he's absolutely incredible. I'm taking him off that list and putting him on the extroverts list. I think he's on the wrong one. Yeah. Well, well I like someone from every category, so who am I? Well, you, you're just fully rounded. What's that called? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, that's right. Oh, but in the end, it's fun, isn't it? It's, and they have done, as, as we say, the more people in the study, the more true it is, okay? And this is 350,000 people, so it must be true. Yes. But the coffee study was about half a million as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, in the Times, Susie, Brooklyn Beckham is starting to interest me because he has set himself up as a chef and he can't cook. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, yes, well, um, unsurprisingly, for someone who's had a chef since birth, he has never had to really find frying pan until the pandemic started. So this piece by Will Pavier in the Times is a masterpiece of a sly dig. Occasionally, talking about this show of Brooklyn's, which is on Instagram and Facebook, I think, occasionally in the show, he appears to be holding a spatula. Um, and apparently the guy has to be shown uh, lots of basic things. He had a team of 62 people to make a sandwich. And uh, it cost $100,000 to make each show. Uh, he's got a cheat sheet of things about what a whiskey is and how to parboil things. He only started cooking in earnest during the pandemic, but he had eaten a lot of food while growing up. And, he, <laughs> and he's, making, he's making things that are quite simple. I think that's the, the issue, because we discovered this Brooklyn Beckham thing came up, didn't it, Storm, when he was on an American programme, and he said, I'm going to show you how to make a bacon sandwich, yeah. which isn't difficult, and it all went wrong. And this is him making a fish and chip bagel. Should we do coleslaw to give it a bit of a tang? Oh, perfect. Coleslaw gives sandwiches a different like texture, creamy texture, crunchy texture. I love coleslaw. Very From good. the joint, panko crusted. Can't have enough coleslaw. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm yeah. obsessed with yeah. slot. Like, oh, it's so good. It's perfect. Wow. What are you thinking, guys? It's like the American version of fish and chips. <laughs> Sorry, coleslaw, where's the carrot? It's actually is even worse than I thought it would be. I, yeah. I thought it looked delicious, and I just hung No, it's delicious, but there's no, there's no, uh, there's no skill there. There's no. No, I mean, of course just... not. I wasn't expecting that though. I but, but, Maybe he's microphobic. But I, yeah, he might be <laughs> microphobic. <laughs> right? Pete, I suppose the issue here is he, it's the privilege that's the problem, isn't it? Because if that guy had been an unknown and he was doing this, it would, it would go viral and we'd all enjoy it. But it's because he's had such a privileged upbringing. Well, indeed it is, and I really hope he washed his hands. They had blue gloves on at the end holding the sandwich, but I went to Caton College for three years before I went into show business, and I know how hard it is. He makes a mockery of making a sandwich. My mother would give him a slap with a wet lettuce. <laughs> Does this get into... Do we all start end up being a bit too hard on him? I don't know. I don't like to sort of... 
I think we're naturally a bit harder on people that have been born into privilege. But he can't choose society. that. But no, no, he can't choose that, but it's just the fact that he went from being a photographer where I believe he got a, a, a role in Burberry and that all of a sudden didn't work and now he's going to be a chef. It's like, well, pick one. He's got exhibitions, he's got a $100,000 show, and if he was nobody, he wouldn't yeah, have got any true. of those opportunities. It, it just goes to show that wealth skips generations. Yeah, if your parents are really rich, you, you learn you don't have to earn anything. And that's what you grow up, you just, you, you, there's no way of changing it. But the revenge here is the whole world is laughing at him. But maybe yeah, it's, but really it's sad well. because it is sad. whatever natural talent he may have, he's not been able to find it. Mm. You know, his dad found his natural talent, his mum found some kind of talent. Oh, so the, the world's smallest violins. I think People think forget his dad was an amazing footballer. An amazing footballer. You agree with me on that, Pete. I mean, what an incredible, the first time we discovered Beckham was when he scored that goal against Wimbledon from the halfway line. What a player. I think he had the gift like Wayne, Wayne Rooney. There is footballers and footballers. I think they both had gifts. And uh, yes, I think he is a privileged young man. And there'll be all these sycophantic people around him telling him how good he is instead of saying, excuse me, put it down and go and get a proper job. Because <laughs> he could change a lot of lives if he went to work in a food bank or something. He says, I like cheese, it's like butter. That's what <laughs> <laughs> oh, we made the crew laugh. That's good. It's always a good sign. Storm, in the mirror. Go I've on. A, I love this. Go I've on. got another study, so it must yeah. be true. Well, it's a poll, actually. It's a Radio 2 poll, um, and it's about our favourite rom-com. So what's your favourite rom-com, Jeremy? Oh, I'd probably go Sleepers in Seattle. Oh, nice. It's definitely on there. So that's number six on the list. Notting Hill is number one. Pretty Woman, which is one of my favourites, is number two. We've also got things like Gregory's Girls of Scott. Absolutely adore uh, and then as good as it gets is another one at, at number 16 so there's just a lot of oh, i might content. change i might change to the something about mary just for that the lead. princess on there? bride is at number eight what's wrong with the world the princess bride is the greatest film ever made of all time oh, it's, it's, why is it number eight? Oh dear rom-coms rom -coms are like going to the dentist you know, i try and put it off as long as possible well, I think I mean, what I like is that... any of these movies, no. Martin? Come on, Inconceivable! Nick Nottingham was brilliant. Uh, Hugh Grant. I'm, I'm Pete, well, which is your favourite? Schwarzenegger, man. Bridget Jones. Yeah, that's good. Bridget Jones is on there. It's number five. Uh, it's I'm Gregory's Girl. Of... I bet you love Gregory's Girl, Martin. I've never seen it. You have? What do you mean? I don't know. The classic it. British film is a sort of... It's the sort of film you watch in Union Jack boxer shorts. Oh, really? Well, maybe I should see it. <laughs> <laughs> should we talk about this on Friday? What are our favourite rom-coms? Oh, we should do. Martin's boxer shorts. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> OK, that's it for stories of the day. Don't go anywhere, because the conversation continues after the break on Jeremy Vine Extras with Storm. Of course, we're going to be here for another hour to hear more of your calls. I'm going to be joined by Owen Jones and Mike Parry. We're going to be discussing whether you're ready to live with COVID. That's after the restrictions have been scrapped. And we'd also love your calls on Oxfordshire Council going vegan. Is that the right decision or should others and should others do the same? Get your calls in now. That number is 0207 862 222. We'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you so much to Susie, Pete and Martin for joining us. Storm is back after this short break. Have a nice day. <laughs>